All right, y'all, so you're a tanker. You just enlisted in the Army. Uh, you got the MOS 19 kilo M1 armor crewman. And I'm sure you don't know what that is. A lot of people don't. When I joined the Army, I didn't know what the MOS 19 kilo was or what it did, you know. And um, I'm just here to clear some of that up. So being in the being in the MOS 19 kilo, your combat arms, right? But you're a different type of breed, all right? Uh, most people consider combat arms three MOSs. You can add um, artillery in there, but it's usually infantry, uh, cavalry scouts, and M1 armor crewmen. That's you know your main kind of ground pounder uh, type of guys, and that would be 11 Bravo, 19 Delta, and 19 Kilo. Um, I'm not really going to get into the Delta and Bravo side. I'm just going to stay in the in the Kilo side. So as a 19 Kilo, you're combat arms, but you're a mounted warrior. Uh, that's not to say I haven't done missions as a dismount rifleman, you know, at various training events. But you're primarily um, on tanks. I'd say probably about 75 to 80 percent of the time. Some people, it's a little bit less. Some people, it's a little bit more. But I'd say that's a pretty fair split. And um, all I can tell you is that if you haven't boarded the plane yet or if you haven't finalized you know, your contract, if you didn't realize that, you're, that you were going to be mounted like on a vehicle, then um, I would back out of it now. Because what you're looking at is long, long hours of maintenance. Um which is it's you're basically going to be a, a grease monkey uh when you're back in garrison which means if you, you successfully complete uh one stop unit training at fort benning and then you get to uh your first duty station primarily you're going to be doing a lot and lot of maintenance and the op tempo for the armor guys is extremely high i don't know what it is like with other units i hear um specifically but uh if your armor and uh in in the cav you're gonna be in the field, you know? And I'll tell you, typical work life, man, I'd say about one to two months of maintenance, 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 and training, getting ready for the next uh, field problem. And then you'd go, and, and again, this is our, it's blood, sweat, and tears is going into these vehicles. That's why you need to understand if you wanna, if you pick that MOS, it's gonna be turning wrenches, uh, wiping down hubs, you know what I'm saying? You can do a lot of basic mechanic level stuff on these armored vehicles. And um, honestly, that's the big deal. That's a big deal. Um, people think, all right, you're just going to go up and shoot the tank, this, this, and that. That's not the case. You, you start off as either a driver or a loader, typically a loader, because the loader's learning station. And, you know, you're, you're not shooting the tank. You know, you're just loading rounds and, and, and helping with maintenance, basically. Um, and or you'll you'll be a driver, which consists of you not pulling any triggers at all. You're just sitting in a in a little seat, driving the vehicle. You know what I'm saying? And and you could be in those positions from you know anywhere from one to possibly four or five years. You know, because before you get to become a gunner, you you have to prove yourself in this MOS. So that's a lot to think about. You know what I'm saying? Whereas the other MOSs like Infantry and Delta, I mean, uh, Infantry and, and Cav Scouts, I feel like they have an advantage because they don't have the long maintenance hours that the armor guys do. So they have more time to do PT, physical training. They have more time to do training in general, um, you know, whether it be basic rifle marksmanship or uh, battle drills and stuff like that. So. It's just something to think about, man. It's just something to think about if, if you haven't gone to the, on that plane yet. But if, you, if you're mechanically inclined, you don't mind hard work, and, and, and shooting that tank is just something that you want to do, and you don't care about the long work hours and whatnot, I would say go for it. i say the, the personality type or the person that would fit most well in, in the armor community, it's not, you know, not the track athlete um, or the football player. You know, I made that decision. I played a lot of high school sports and stuff. And those guys honestly belong in infantry, in um, the cavalry scouts or reconnaissance, in uh, FO jobs. You know what I'm saying? Armor is more, I'd say, geared towards the 
the intelligent guy who wants to pull triggers. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not saying that there's not uh, any smart guys in, in the other combat arms MOSs, but being a tanker, you really have to be really savvy, you know, really, really tech savvy as well. There's a lot of computers in there. I don't know if I can really talk about that. Um, but again, saying that you need to be, I'd say the best guys, you know, somebody who worked on his dad's truck a lot as a child growing up or working on a farm, just used to hard work, working on tractors, ele electrical things. Say in high school, you had to shop classes and stuff like that, you know, tools and, and you want to shoot the tank, you know what I'm saying? Tanks intrigue you. Then I would say go for that job. But if you're looking for something that's extremely physically challenging and and stuff of that nature, once you leave the um, once you once you get out of OSA, which is basically an army's version of boot camp, you could say, you're you're really not going to be challenged like that that much anymore. You you know what I'm saying? It's going to be more uh, you're going to you're going to be doing PT and stuff like that, but it's it's not going to be the same. It's not like you see, you'll see the infantry guys getting off at 12, 1 o'clock, uh, going to the gym and stuff like that, or, get, or getting told for their work to go to the gym, you know, or just doing practical training. Whereas being in the armor community, you're going to do a lot of sitting around, cleaning your vehicle, uh, adding fluids, just general maintenance things that I think, you know, get overlooked by a lot of people before they, they pick that MOS. So just something to think about. Um, I'd say if you really want to serve your country, you know, you want to be combat arms, but again, you not, you're not super physically fit, you know, or sitting in a foxhole might not be your style. Then you know the armor community is probably where you want to be. Now, um, excuse me. <laughs> um, the. 19 kilo, right? So the 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 best part about being a, a tanker is you know you the you are the biggest gun in the battlefield. You know there's nothing like driving a 72 ton machine and shooting 120 millimeter cannon and stuff like that. That's all fun and games. But re the real perks come in when we go to the field and the infantry guys and the scout guys are humping with their rucksacks. You know sucking. You know sucking wind, struggling. Uh, we're driving around and uh, we're driving around with monsters and coolers and uh, coffee, little grills with steak and stuff like that and whatnot. It's, it's definitely a, a sweet gig when it, when it comes to that. So, you know, if you want to serve your country or anything, but you're a bit on the lazier side physically, I think that the armor community would definitely be, you know, for you. Um, if you I'm gonna make a couple more videos talking about red about OSA one stop unit training when I went it wasn't the 25 or 22 week model that they have now going down to Fort Benning I believe when I went it was 16 weeks and I'll go through them in kind of in, in phases so I'll do a you know day like your first 72 hours that'll be a video then uh, red phase white phase blue phase black phase and eventually gold phase and graduate and um and earn your MOS. So look out for those and thank you guys.